When showing a printed part to somebody not familiar with 3D printing, one of the most common questions I get asked is how long did that take to make? In most cases, the response to my answer is something along the lines of, oh, so it's kind of slow, or oh, so things take a while to make. I had sort of come to terms with the limitations of FDM or FFF printing that we had reached, but there are many that have been pushing the bar. Through a combination of hardware and firmware advancements, 3D printers are able to print many multiples faster than they could just a few years ago. One thing I've seen recently is a wave of new high flow specific filaments. This is primarily coming in the form of PLA, at least for now, but I imagine it will only be a matter of time before we start to see them in other types of filaments. Personally, I've been a bit skeptical about how these high flow PLAs work, and I've wanted to do some testing. Creality sent over a couple spools of their Hyper PLA with the K1, but the K1 is waiting on a part, so we'll take one of those spools and see how well it performs. In this video, we will test the Hyper PLA against a standard PLA to see if and what flow differences we're able to achieve. Since the Hyper PLA is in white, we will run a traditional track test as well as Stefan's flow test to weigh how much we are actually extruding. Hopefully, we will have a better idea by the end if these filaments are worth it. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. At the time of recording, the high flow PLAs that I have seen are eSun's ePLA HS, Chitty Tech's Rapido, Creality's Hyper, and Atomic's High Flow. Most of them come in a few different colors, with some having very little info, and others having a few mechanical properties, but the emphasis on all of them is higher flow. I was able to find a TDS over on eSun's website that allowed me to compare their high flow PLA against their more standard PLA+. Under physical properties, the density is fairly similar between the two, but interestingly the melt flow index was 5 on standard PLA+, versus 4.5 on the high flow for a difference of 10%. For mechanical properties, the high flow scored lower in tensile and impact strength, but notably better in flexural strength. I didn't see any other differences being listed other than that the high flow can be printed at a wider range of temperatures. Moving on to the testing, I knew I wanted to start with the max flow test built into Orca Slicer that we covered a couple of months ago. This allows you to enter a start and end flow rate, which generates a single walled track model. This is then printed and inspected to check where any under extrusion or layer delamination is happening to give you a rough idea of what your max flow rate is for that material and your tool head. The original plan was to use the AnchorMake M5 that I've been testing out. It has a higher flow hot end and now has a built in profile in Orca Slicer. I started off with a 10 to 22 cubic millimeters per second test using Polymaker PLA, thinking that with the higher flow hot end, maybe we would be able to reach close to those upper values. After creating the file, I exported the G code and sent it through the Anchor Make Slicer to be printed. Then I watched and waited as the track printed, thinking any time now that it would start under extruding, but it never happened. I then rinsed and repeated this test at 20 to 32 and 30 to 42 cubic millimeters per second, and other than a tiny imperfection here or there, it looked mostly great. At this point, I knew something was clearly off because there's no way that that hardware is able to achieve those high flow rates. I thought there was a chance that the AnchorMake Slicer was modifying flow rates when I was using it, so I exported from Orca Slicer directly to a flash drive and printed from the flash drive with a range of 10 to 32 cubic millimeters per second with the exact same results as before. My current conclusion is that the AnchorMake M5 might have some sort of a firmware hard cap for flow rate, and so Anything that would be above that, it drops down so it never exceeds that value. This meant it definitely wasn't going to work for our testing, so I jumped over to the Cyborg Voron V0.2 that we recently finished building on stream. This has a standard flow hot end, so I ran the track test with Voxel PLA using a range of 10 to 20 cubic millimeters per second. This was more than enough to see under extrusion and layers not sticking together, which is one of the few times ever that I've been happy to see this. Next, I loaded in the Creality Hyper PLA and ran the exact same G code to compare results. Unfortunately, the Creality Hyper PLA that I was sent is in white, which does make it more difficult to see imperfections, especially on camera. Even with this, there are a couple of points that show that the Hyper PLA clearly performed better than the standard PLA. 
Between 80 to 20 cubic millimeters a second, the standard PLA was struggling on the tight curves of the track to stick to the previous layers, which caused the print to lose a bit of its form, especially on those top layers. This was not the case with the Hyper PLA, and it did maintain adhesion to the previous layer all the way through. Additionally, they both had obvious signs of under extrusion, but looking from the sides, I would say that it is much more significant on the standard PLA. With the red PLA, it looked to extrude fine up until around 12 cubic millimeters per second, which is what I had set the maximum flow rate for with PLA previously. For the white Hyper PLA, this was much tougher to determine, so I ran Stefan's extrusion system benchmark. This test allowed me to weigh and plot any extrusion loss at different flow rates. For this, I ran three separate tests for both filaments due to the size of the Voron Zero plate. With a temperature of 220 Celsius, we went from 8 to 24 cubic millimeters a second for both the standard PLA and the Hyper PLA. I then weighed each extrusion plot and created a table to keep track of the flow rate used and the weight of the plot in milligrams. One thing I found interesting was that the first plot of each test actually extruded more than the last plot of the previous test, even though that first plot had a higher flow rate. The only thing I could think of is that during the preheating for the first plot, it sits at the temp for longer, allowing more filament to melt inside of the hot end. Looking at the results on a graph, the Hyper PLA definitely did extrude better across the board, but not by a ton. The range of increase was between 2 and 8%, with the average being around 5%. A bit disappointing of a result, but I'm glad it at least did extrude more, even if it wasn't as much as I had hoped for. That being said, much more testing still needs to be done, and this was specifically with Creality's Hyper PLA, and I can't speak for any of the other high flow PLAs that I mentioned earlier on because they might have a completely different formula. Also, this test was done with just one specific set of hardware, and if there's anything we learned in our flow testing of the Basel nozzle, it's that different combinations of hot end and extruders can lead to significantly different results when we're talking about flow rates that they're able to achieve. But this is a data point, and I do look forward to seeing what the results are of others once they've gotten a chance to use either the Hyper PLA or any of the other high flow filaments out there. And that has been Hyper PLA. Let me know in the comments down below if you've tested out either the Hyper PLA or any of the other higher flow PLAs, what your experience has been like, and if you've really noticed much of a difference compared to printing with just a standard PLA. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.